that are happening there and the things that you have access to. Go to the second link that says teacher appreciation. That'll take you directly to the content page where you can sign up and get your free year if you're a new teacher and your free six months if you're an existing teacher. Let's show them how we utilize resources and we make sure that we take time, those folks who are HBCU alum, and use this. And let's see what Stride has to offer. We're excited about it. We know you will be too. Darren, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the folks? No, I mean, just, you know, as a teacher myself, you know, and and um, understanding the need. Um, and, and of course, with the, you know, the, the diversity that's needed in our teaching core across the country, you know, I know our HBCU. <laughs> Yeah. I love my HBCU And boy, boy I love it, love it yeah. I love it, love it yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU yeah. And man yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. man. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab To see if my team won a lot If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth but if they won, she tab. Yeah. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, yes, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome. This is Dr. Bills Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Welcome to episode 476 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Radio show and podcast. The show is covering the HBCU sporting the ass for all things HBCU sports. For institutions large and small from the NEIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics, to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Yada Kabil, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Yes, Mike Washington is out on assignment, but we have none other than A.B. Drew. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to KCH 1230 M Studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. I hope all both of your gentlemen are dry, because I heard that the uh, weather got rough yesterday and a lot of rain, and then today it decides to drop in temperatures, so I hope you're also warm. With that being said, Charles, how you doing? Doing well, Doc. Doing well. I want to send a shout-out to my, my father-in-law catching us tonight, uh, Will Jenkins out of Jackson. So I want to say hello, uh, Dad. How you doing over there? Uh, as well as my family back in Jackson. My brother-in-law, Jenkins. sister-in-law. Hello, yes, Mr. indeed. Jenkins. So definitely want to send shouts out over there. But, you know, I uh, uh, I got my eyes on Josh Sims out there on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, let Josh know. Josh Sims, man. He getting up there, think he get a little fly. Hey, I see that. Up young pups. I'm going to have to tell you, young pups, slow down. Slow down. Slow down. With that being said, today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THC Agency. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. That being said, A.D. Drew, how are you doing today? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to all those primarily in our viewing area looking at the numbers because uh, if you're in the southeast over the last uh, 24 hours, you have felt the wrath of global warming uh, yesterday into today, depending on your location. Charles, let me get let me get some of that uh, some of them greens. No, I'm terrible off the tees, decent <laughs> mid range, but I could two put. I could two put with the best of them, my brother. I could two put. I could two put for you. <laughs> I was out there working on chipping and putting today. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can do that mid range and, and everything. But uh, hey, and uh, Dr. Kabir, at some point in time, I want to have a funeral on this show as we start off the new year. I, I'll get to that a little bit later. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna be fascinating. How about that lady? <laughs> <laughs> I want to bury. I now want to bury something in 2024. Uh oh. I thought I left it in 2020. Uh, yeah, let's leave it over there in 2020. 
three. If that don't capture your attention, I don't know what will. Shout out to the lab listeners speaking of that. With that being said, as you notice, I'm transitioning to basketball. I know there's some football things going on out there, and we just can't get rid of it. But I'm moving to basketball. I'm excited for basketball. We had our first conference games at the Division One level for the Miag and Swag this past weekend. I think I'm going to rest my case. I'm going to bring out my poll rankings week one, and we're going to see what they look like uh, as we get into basketball. Tried to slide down the basketball in week zero last week, as I like to call it, as we transition from football into, you know, pre-season, uh, non-conference season, if you will, for basketball. Um, and even that got off the rail with more football talk. This week, I promise you, basketball, basketball, basketball. Mm. Or oh, maybe not so fast. Charles the pig's going to take over. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, maybe not so fast, Charles. Not so fast. There's always some news going on with that other sport that happens in the fall. So we got we got we got news to get to with it. <laughs> no doubt about it. Go ahead. What direction you want to go with uh, what's news on your mind? Well actually this is our uh, breaking news this afternoon. This comes to us from HBC Sports. But the Southern Heritage Classic, uh they will be staying in Memphis for the next 20 years. Southern Heritage Classic has solidified its home base for the foreseeable future on Tuesday. Summit Management Corporation in the city of Memphis announced a deal uh, was reached to keep the Southern Heritage Classic in Memphis through the 2032 season. This was reported by Memphis TV Action News 5. <clears throat> uh, and this is a quote. I am thankful to the city of Memphis for their support. We appreciate their diligence in ensuring the Southern Heritage Classic will continue to be held at the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. And that is a quote from Fred Jones, who is, of course, the founder of the Southern Heritage Classic. <clears throat> Football talk. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> I told y'all. I tried. I tried. <laughs> What's fascinating is, is obviously Pine Bluff in Tennessee State has Pine Bluff signed a two-year contract, so this will be going in their second year. That extends everything. So the the interest for a lot of folks will want to know, you know, one, whether Tennessee State is going to remain in the classic. And uh, will Pine Bluff be their competition or will there be somebody else since there's extension to the Southern Heritage Classic in itself? That's probably the next iteration of what people want to hear. But with that being said, A.D. Drew, what direction are you going in? Uh, let's go general. It's going to include a little bit of football in this uh, general one, but we'll go with the general <laughs> one. And that is going to be HBCU Go secures a multi-year media partnership with the SIAC, including first sport that they list is football, Dr. Kabir. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's in the headline like that. <laughs> Men's and women's basketball and the Olympic sports through – 2032, and this comes from the SIAC.com. Byron Allen's uh, media group, AMG, is, is proud to announce a 10 year media rights partnership with the SIAC that grants HBCU Gold Cable linear streaming broadcast VOD, which is video on demand for those who don't know the lingo, and uh, pay per view rights coverage to all SIAC team sports through 2032. These include regular season contests for football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and Olympic sports. Uh, said Byron Allen, this is a historic moment. And said uh, Commissioner Anthony Holliman, we are thrilled to announce our partnership with HBCU Go through this innovative streaming platform. We invite fans from around the world to join us in celebrating the – and dominant spirit of SIAC culture. And you can read more about this by going to the SIAC.com. Big news with HBCU Go, with HBCU Go. And I like how both of y'all, I said I'm going to move to basketball and y'all find a way to put it in football. <laughs> that, was, that was unique. That was pretty mine was, at least mine was in the headline. I couldn't avoid yeah, that. I mean, neither line. one of you broke code. It was new HBC <laughs> of the day. I'm not saying that. I just love the way y'all did that. It was pretty good. With that being said, I would be less uh, than I would want to be if I did not honor our producer, Roy, G-Boom Holly, that does a lot of work 
in the background for the members, Charles' father, speaking of dads, um, as he shouted out to Wendy Bishop and his dad, but members of Phi Beta Sigma for their Founders Day. Shout out to them. No doubt. In terms of happy Founders Day to the men, as I like to tease them, uh, the blue and white, those Smurfs out there, Smurf colors, you know, I like to give them a hard time. <laughs> Good guys as they do the work of the community in all seriousness around the world and a significant brotherhood uh, that represents uh, some of the best and the brightest of uh, men and out there in the forefront, particularly for our communities. So did want to shout that out. But as I promised, I said I was going to get to some basketball, so I'm putting this out. Swag 2023 for uh, men's and women's basketball HBCU goal schedules are set as they will be doing it for the SWAC January 6th. That was all Alcorn State, Jackson State. I got to watch that game, so I was excited about that. Shout out to Jackson State uh, for getting that victory against the rival big game. Close for a half and it pulled away in the second. Uh, getting it done, obviously winning on the men's, what I was just referencing, but the women of Jackson State continue to do what they do as they seem to get back in the mold uh, to recapture the crown for the SWAC in terms of the tournament as they earned the regular season last year, regardless. January 20th, Southern at Grambling. Nice rivalry game there. January uh, 27th, Alabama A&M in Houston right here at Texas Southern. February 3rd, Bethune-Cookman in Montgomery. That's at Alabama State, as you know. February 10th, my birthday, uh, Alcorn State at Arkansas Pine Bluff as they're in Pine Bluff. February 17th, Mississippi Valley State at Alabama A&M, that's Huntsville. March 2nd, Bethune-Cookman at Southern, Baton Rouge on the bluff. March 9th, Mississippi Valley State at Jackson State, back in Jackson, Mississippi, as they close it out with another rival against Mississippi Valley State. Should be interesting, as I said, we'll get into a little more detail as we get further in the show about some of these conference matchups who may have shocked anybody this first weekend at the major division. We'll focus on that area. Give you some updates on the mid-majors on Thursday. But with that being said, as we get ready uh, to get into the next iteration of the talk, uh, before we turn the page, I'd be, re be re remiss um, since I'm not going to put this on you so you think I'm picking, picking on you. I did want to make sure we represented for Tennessee State as defensive end. Terrell Allen wins 2023 Buck Buchanan Award for HBCU Game Day reported. Having already been named seven different All-American states and earning four different different defensive back players award, Tennessee State football, Terrell Allen garners his biggest postseason award on Saturday night as he was named the 2023 Buck Buchanan Award winner at the FCS National Award Banquet, giving annually to the National Defensive Player of the Year in Division I FCS College Football. Allen was named the Big South OVC Defensive Player of the Year, led FCS in sacks, 14.5, sack yard is 123, tackles for loss, 28, tackle yard is for loss, 149 during the regular season. Little Rock native finished the season with 65 tackles, 44 solo, 21 assists, uh, forcing five fumbles and logging 10 quarterback hurries. He was getting it done. He had a four-game span finishing with four-plus tackles for losses and set a Tennessee State University record with 6.5 against Linwood while recording 10 tackles, 4.4, five sacks in a contest. His 28 tackles for losses is a new TSU single-season record. Second-year Tiger has played 21 games for TSU after transferring in from Austin P. Allen has recorded 101 tackles, 40 tackles for losses, 19 sacks as a member of Eddie George's team. He has 152 career stops, 62 tackles for losses, and 24 sacks. Big deal, big deal. I thought it was fascinating when you think about the last three of the four years, eight, um, but Buchanan winning happens to come from HBCUs. Um, so that's big time, two out of the SWAC, and now one out of the OVC for 2023. Congratulations to Terrell Allen. With that, let's take our first break. We'll come back on the other side, uh, get into a little bit of the men's, I mean, excuse me, the women's top five basketball rankings and see what these gentlemen think about these rankings after week number one. Let's see if we have anybody new at the top. If you've been following a little bit of basketball, you know what Norfolk State has been doing. 
Do they hold on to number one after conference play? We shall see. Stick with us. Be right back after this first break. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton, Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Impress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention yes, as he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into the mid major division women's basketball poll rankings. Number one. This is after a full slate of conference games this past week and Saturday and Monday contests. I'm fascinated to see what's going on. Let's look at teams that. Uh, dropped out when we look at the women's uh, division of what's taking place. I think that's on the men's side. Let's uh, get into the women's uh, in terms of those rankings, uh, in terms of what that looks like. As we are getting those updates to be shown in terms of women's versus men's, uh, in terms of the women's dropping out, let me start there. Yeah, Maryland Eastern Shore uh, dropping out this week. The Hawks. Uh, came in pretty well in terms of what they did in non-conference, but they took two tough conference losses this week as they were 7-9, 0-2, as well as Grandma State Tigers fall to 7-6 as they split this weekend, including a home tough loss to Texas Southern. That uh, probably shocked a lot of people in terms of the final score in that contest as Texas Southern uh, controlled a lot of that game and was able to hold on to the end of it. But receiving votes this week in terms of what that looks like uh, moving forward, it's fascinating when you see those teams that are trying to get it done. Alabama State Hornets is seven and eight, uh, two and zero. Oh, Bethune Cookman uh, six and one as they are rolling. Get a big win over their rival, Fam you, uh, the Lady Rattlers over there uh, could not get it done as they were on the road. Bethune Cookman gets it done and holds home court. Let's get into the top five as some programs are rolling there. We're gonna start out with number five. That is UAB. UAPB, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions, uh, just continue to roll. They were 7-8, and 2-0 and oh in terms of what that looks like as they're rolling with 49 points as they were not ranked uh, last week in those poll rankings. But uh, they dominated in their contest. They had a 75-67 to 67 win against Alabama A&M as they pulled away late in their contest. But then they got their 30-spot win as they beat Alabama State. Check this out. 85 to 52 in that matchup. Uh, moving on to number four, Jack State Tigers. They only played the one game. They played the rival in all four state. Uh, they improved to six and one, one over in the conference race, 57 points. As they were not ranked, but they jumped into the top five this week. At number three, North Carolina AT State, the Aggies, 
Um, seven and six, they split over the last uh, weekend in terms of their contest, getting one conference victory, but also having a loss, 61 points. So they fall a spot. Previous rank two, they fall to number three. Green is the number two, the Thune Cookman uh, Wildcats. Uh, the ladies there uh, improved to 10 and four, one and oh in the conference. Talked about what they're getting done. They are rolling uh, as they have 73 points. They move up one spot in week number one. Bringing us to Norfolk State, the Spartans, 12-4, uh, and 2-0, and eight first-place victories, 80 points. They have all first-place points. Uh, they are rolling. Uh, Bethune-Cookman comes in with six Division I wins at number two. But guess how many Division I wins coming into conference play that Norfolk State Spartans had? They had 10 Division I wins. This is the real deal. This team is rolling. They had a 61-point victory over South Carolina State. 94 to 33. You know, we see these scores oftentimes and we see some of these non-conference matchups with the top power five. And you see these 40, 50 points. Well, Norfolk State did it in conference play. That was amazing. Well, some would argue probably the next best team in the rankings was North Carolina Central. Uh, they beat them by 21. Hmm. Uh, and that was on the road. Both of those games were on the road. Um, so, the question for a lot of folks is not whether you see Norfolk State as number one, but can they go through the conference undefeated? And what will be the margin of victory? Uh, obviously, we've seen this a couple of years ago with Jackson State when they were rolling. Mm -hmm. It looks like Norfolk State says they want a little bit more of that attention. We'll see. Let me go to you first, Charles, and see what are your thoughts in the terms of the top five teams in week number one for Dr. Mills' whole rankings on the women's side. Very strong opening five. Uh, when you take a look at, uh, we knew UAPB was going to be one of those teams that was going to come back in uh, uh, very strong. Jackson State strong. Uh, North Carolina a &T coming back uh, strong. Uh, the, the team for me to highlight is Bethune Cook. Uh, when you're talking about uh, a team that's back in the basketball business, uh, last, you know, when, uh, a, a, a blue blood type team, when you're talking about, uh, uh, multiple seasons with 20 plus wins over there uh, uh, in, in the MIA conference and now uh, kind of getting their footing uh, uh, in the sweat. Uh, but a great win over Florida a uh six Division One wins thus far, a nice win over Mercer uh, that I've seen. Uh, and they got a couple of ladies, Chanel McDonald. She can fill it up. Uh, great job this past uh, weekend against Florida a 20 points in that game. Uh, got a couple of Chanel, Chanel uh, McDonald and Chanel Wilson, uh, double digit score. Then they got a couple of Kayla's coming off the bench, Kayla White and Kayla Clark, uh, who also had big games against Florida a &M. So keep an eye out uh, for this Bethune Cooking Wildcat team. Yeah, I will keep my eyes on it. And AD would know this as I transition <laughs> him. Um, it's a tough place to play in Daytona down there in that gym regardless. And when they're really good, they're really good. And well, many other SWAT coaches and players are starting to figure that out. That is not necessarily the place that you want to go when you're trying to get a victory, particularly when they're rolling. And it looks like this year, 2023-2024, that is exactly what the Wildcats are doing. We shall see with some big-time matchups coming. Jackson State, uh, Pine Bluff, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, we'll keep your eyes on those particular games. With that being said, AD Drew, what do you think about the top five in week number one on the winning side? Charles, you know, it's very interesting that your commentary, you kept talking about that school on the beach mm. beating fam you for over half of your commentary. I, I, <laughs> I did take note. I did take note of that, my brother. I did, I just want you, I just want you to know I'm I'm I'm, I'm keeping I'm keeping that up, man. I'm keeping my up bad. with it. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh Dr. Kabir, you talked about that Norfolk uh what was it, 60 point victory over South Carolina State. And that right. wasn't and that wasn't the largest margin of victory over the last week, but we'll leave that one where it is. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that is You're right. I will leave that one right point. there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that wasn't even half of that other bit, margin of victory. Anyway, uh, shout out to Norfolk State, though. Ten wins, uh, nine conference, all of them. Uh, Division one, ten Division one victories. What I, what I find intriguing about the poll this year, Doctor Cavill, especially on the women's side, it's January, and you don't have a bunch of teams upside down in your top five. 
Yeah. Like we, like we have seen for so many years where teams are coming in three and 10 and things and, and stuff like that, four and four and eight, four and nine. I mean, you've got team, you got, you had a team that actually came in with double digits in the non-conference, another team that quickly went and got that uh, that double digit. You got a couple of other teams knocking on the door above 500. So this is uh, – I don't know Great point. If, this, if this is a shifting of uh, basketball philosophy, be it that they're putting in the resources into, uh, into basketball, or is this part of the NIL uh, transfer portal? I, I mean – it's too early to figure out, but whatever it is, I like the trend that has started this year. Great points. And, and to illustrate that even more, you know, I talked about Norfolk State. Uh, the Spartans having 10 win, D1 wins coming in. And why okay, so Bethune Cookman having six. The North Carolina A State, uh, the Aggies had four D1 wins. Jackson State mm-hmm. Tigers, top five program, had two D1 wins. Golden Lions had three D1 wins coming in. And even those teams, uh, top two teams on the outside, uh, Southern had two D1 wins. Brown had three Division I wins. So big-time games, Alabama a and four Division I wins, a team that has not received votes but further down that I did not illustrate. But just, you know, we talked about Maryland Eastern Shore dropping out, but they came in 500 with five D1 wins, and they take two conference losses that let you know you're absolutely right. You're seeing teams be able to schedule better, the talent that's coming in, better coaching uh, as well, that's able to get some of those non-conference wins and coming in in a much better shape in terms of conference play, which is fascinating. So I really like what you pointed out there with that, Drew. Uh, Charles kind of put this out there, uh, talking about a little bit of surprise with Bethune Cookman. But in terms of those teams, whether it's the top five ranking or other teams, any surprise uh, that you saw coming out of this uh, first week in terms of the rankings to you? For me, uh, I, I'll talk about maybe not a surprise because I think the top five, those were teams who I pretty much thought would be there. It, but Bethune, you weren't didn't know quite if, if this was their year, but – Knowing that Bethune tradition being on the wrong end of the mm. uh, Bethune tradition, you know, it does not shock me that they have uh, gotten back into the basketball business up over there on the beach instead of playing beach volleyball. I'll tell you what, the, the one thing that is a little shocking to me is Southern being so far upside down. Uh, right now now i haven't took a deep dive into their schedule to know if there were a lot of check games that they played or if they uh of those nine losses how many of those were were competitive i like I, said, I haven't taken a deep dive into it but they did That's get fair. two they did get two conference victories so yeah you know you know all, all that stuff that was going on outside in december and november and everything <laughs> it looks like early has prepared them to have at least initial success in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Good stuff. And I'll bring it back to Charles. Just any final thoughts in terms of what stood out to you in terms of those top fives? Anything that surprised you outside of the equipment that you kind of mentioned uh, with uh, your lead in <clears throat> breaking it down? No, I mean, I, th- I think Southern. Uh, I think uh, AD touched on it. I mean, when you talk about uh, the Southern Jaguars team, uh, that was uh, two good wins this, uh, this past weekend. And they picked up where they left off. I think that was the big thing that you just kind of uh, want to see. I know it's very early in the season, but uh, just continuing that momentum in terms of taking what they did in the SWAC tournament and applying it to the first couple of games here in SWAC play, uh, it, it's, it, it just shows uh, the depth uh, of the league in terms of parity. I mean, you're going to, you're going to have teams fighting it out. It looks like over there, definitely in the West, when you're talking about uh, Southern and Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, I'm sure Gramlin would be in the mix. We'll see uh, what Prairie View uh, can do uh, when when teams have to make that, that Texas two step. But then you're talking about uh, you know teams in the East, Alabama a and Jackson State, Bethune Cookman uh, in the mix. So it, it's going to be a fun year. I'm looking forward to. It. Can I ask one question before we go to break? Quick question. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. So all right, Fairview Valley. 
probably probably not going to get in. Who are the other two that are, are going to be left outside? I need a couple of more besides. games. I need a couple yeah. of more games. I agree with you that FAMU and Valley are probably really going to struggle. Two of the four. I might add all four to put you three, but to get me to that fourth one, it's going to be hard for me to put somebody out there. You're talking about jumping on the limb? Charles, yeah. you want to jump out there? <laughs> yeah. it, it might be a fight. It might be a fight for Texas Southern, but all that was a good win. It was a good win to start. Uh, start yeah, that helps. That helps a yeah. lot. You're right. You're looking at the Texas Southern. That's probably that fourth one. Uh, but traditionally, uh, you're right. The first two spots down there, they're kind of easily eliminated when you're going in those last two, three weeks. But it seems to always be a fight in terms of between uh, Six to nine ten. and eight. Sometimes. Yeah. Nine, ten, and eight, if you would, in that seventh spot. So yeah. it'll be interesting to follow. Uh, but great question is you start to understanding that you can quickly get out of the mix if you're not careful as you're rolling around. To your point, Prairie View has to be careful. They got to come home. They got to get right quick because they're already in a deep hole, 0 and 2 versus yeah. Texas Southern. They snuck out, out that win against Grambling at 1 and 1. And the rule, generally, for the Miaka Swack, you want to split on the road. And you want to see if you can get the sweep at home. But yeah. Texas Southern did that, and a couple of other teams did that as well. So we'll see what that looks like on the other side. Where we'll come back and talk about the top five on the men's poll ranking. Stick with us. We we'll right back after this next break. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. <laughs> quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab uh, with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, but we have none other than AD Drew. We're going to get into the men's top five poll rankings this week. We do have one team dropping out, which means we have somebody jumping into the top five. We'll see what that looks like. And dropping out was Tennessee State Titans as they fall to eight and nine, uh, one and three. They had uh, two uh, tough conference losses as they started off conference play actually last week and split at home. They go on the road and they take two L's. Tough for Tennessee State, especially coming out of. Uh, uh, non-conference play, they were able to get four D1 wins, so expect them to maybe hold the weight a little bit, but it's still early. We'll see if they can right the ship. Uh, but trouble uh, is going down there in terms of uh, Tennessee State, if you will. Receiving votes this week are Alabama State Hornets, a 7-8, 2-0, and, 0, 
and Bethune Cookman, six and eight, who got a big win. And when I say big win, not because they beat FAMU, uh, but the way they beat FAMU in that uh, March. <laughs> now, now that <laughs> you big. go, Doc. I mean, they were playing all star game, dunks all along, your highlights out there. And credit to Bethune Cookman because they made sure they got those highlights out of FAMU. I guess they're getting a little rep- retribution, if you will, for what took place uh, on the gridiron during football season. They want to do it to basketball, and they're doing it both men's and women's, so it should be fascinating there. With that being said, let's get into our top five. At number five, Jackson State Tigers. They are 5-9, and 1-0. Oh. They get the big win over all point, as we said. Uh, this is a team, the Braves, that have won the regular season the last couple of years. So the expectation is the Braves are going to be in the business. Braves didn't do too well in non-conference play, uh, but this is a team that's tough. You know, they're tough at home, but they were on the road where it looks like Jackson State says they want to be in the race. They finished top four last year in the SWAC, and they started on a good way to go coming open up the season. Six, three points, but they remain in the five spot. This is where the new team jumps in. The Southern Jaguars, mm. new coach, new attitude, but they start out actually hot during the regular season last couple of years. Well, they do it again, and they do it against the Texas two-step. So we'll see what that looks like as they improve to eight and seven. So they go over the 500 mark, and they're 2-0 in conference play, uh, 79 <laughs> points. They were not ranked. Had some big, solid D1 wins as they come in with three, just like Jackson State in the non-conference. So they are playing some pretty good basketball and looking good. At number three, this name may surprise some people, Delaware State Hornets. They are at 500, 99, and they get two big conference victories, 87 points. They move up a spot, but check this out as we get into it when you start thinking about it. They have five Division I non-conference wins, so I knew they were pretty good. In week zero, they were ranked four, so they move up a spot this weekend. And number two, Norfolk State Spartans, probably the game of the week, was not on Saturday. It was on Monday. Norfolk State gets it done on Saturday as they beat up on South Carolina State, 79 to 72. Shout out to the Bulldogs that were very respectful in that matchup. But the game came on Monday. So they were in the Google State uh, Center over there in the basketball arena in North Carolina Central. Mm. Got it done. Close contest. Went down to the wire. But Central gets it done 60 to 58. Big time matchup. As we went down the stretch, we had that legendary game last year, conference tournament, where it looks like these are cream of the crop, at least early on in the MEAC, but they get it done. 10 and 7, 2 and 0 uh, in terms of Norfolk State. Number one, North Carolina Central, 10 and 7, 2 and 0. They get the big victory, six first place, votes, 105 points. They move up to number one. They are the new number one when you look at North Carolina Central. The Eagles looking good, flying high. Because Newton is back in the basketball business. Uh, he has some young talent out there, guards, and they play hard. Very talented coming in uh, with four Division I wins. Norfolk State had the most coming out of any of our HBC programs with six Division I wins. Um, but that gives you some indication of how good North Carolina Central is. Fascinating to see what that looks like. Drew, I'm going to go to you first this time. What are your thoughts on the top five teams uh, in the major division for HBCU men's basketball in week number one. I will start off with the question that you asked at the end of the segment when we were talking about the women. Which of these teams in the top five surprised me when I look at this poll? Mm. That would be the Hornets of Delaware State. The Mm. other four teams are – Essentially, your blue blood uh, HBCU basketball teams, the teams that you expect to to be in the mix. And then your team, your your team receiving votes, Tennessee State, you also expect them to uh, to be in the mix. And even when you drop where the team that dropped out and then when you look at the other teams receiving votes, Alabama State, Bethune. Yeah, yeah, but them used to play some basketball down there. They got, I mean, they got an NBA former NBA player as they coach. So you expect them to start figuring it out sooner or later. And, <laughs> and and Howard the last couple of years has has really been a uh, force in the BA. But the one team that sticks out like a sore thumb is Delaware State. Mm. And 
when I take a look, when I take a look at Delaware State, I mean, you got this this kid, Jevin Muniz. Muniz. He he put up a 30 piece the the other day against uh nice. Against Morgan State, uh, scoring scoring thirty one points, and then Mar- Martez Robinson uh, jumped in with nineteen. And when Munez is not put putting up points, he's dishing out dimes because he gave out led the team in assists in the other game that he played this week. That game being uh, being against Coppin State, where he had uh, five assists, but Robinson missed the consistency. Put up thirteen points a day uh, game. Heck of a one-two point uh, punch for the Delaware State Hornets is Robinson comes in averaging seventeen point three, and Munez is averaging fourteen point five. And then you got another uh, Tavares uh, right there at nine point nine points. So you got three of them essentially in double digits for this team that no one is is. Probably had it. If I go back and look at preseason polls, I guarantee you they were either five or six in the pre in the preseason polls uh there. So how would uh it's gonna be a little tough for you to be in that uh that number three? We got a new top three in in in, in the MEAC. And, and Coppins is uh has always been up there also. So we may be seeing the change of the guard in the mm, Mid Eastern yes, Athletic already, Conference. Already mm. up in the MEAC, Howard may be in some trouble. Howard and Coppins. Yeah. Uh, they did split. They found a way to get a victory, which was important. South Carolina State for a lot of that second half, uh, South Carolina State Bulldogs were giving the business to Howard. They found a way to scrub out a win late, get it done, uh, overtime and everything, but uh, forced the tie and then take it and get the win in overtime. But they were looking on the ropes. So credit to them to find a way to scratch it out on the road. But it's fascinating to see what that looks like. And thank you, Reggie, for not uh, going ahead and putting up that hundred. You very well could have put that hundred on on us uh, over there on the beach, and we and we, and, and we appreciate we appreciate y'all not, put, not not breaking the clock on us. <laughs> oh man, they were doing the business. Charles, what are your thoughts? Uh, I got I got to agree with AD. I think Delaware State is a team that, that jumps. Out. I got to go to their roster see how many guys they got from Philly on their team. Yeah, to see where <laughs> oh, uh, about New York. talent coming. Yeah, or New York, either or. But uh, uh like you said, probably Delaware both. St- I know is Delaware State going to be that team to kind of usurp Howard this year? So that'll be very interesting to watch. Uh, you got the Blue Bloods up there at the top, North Carolina Central and Norfolk State. Great win for North Carolina Central in terms of uh, holding serve at the House of McClendon uh, last night. So uh, great job uh, with that uh, big win over Norfolk State. A lot of excitement around the Jackson State basketball team. Uh, Doc, you saw what they did in, in Las Vegas. Uh, great representation of themselves out there. Uh, but they a great win over Alcorn. If you remember last year, Alcorn uh, started off the uh, swag season beating Jackson State at home. So that was a big uh, retribution win for uh, Jackson State uh, over Alcorn. And we know Alcorn will be right there in the mix at, at some point uh, with, with regard to Coach Bussey. Uh, but Southern, huge weekend with them uh, beating Texas Southern and Prairie View. Big thing that sticks out for me is Southern's defense in the second half. Uh, You take a look at the game against Texas Southern. Hell, uh, Texas Southern only 20% shooting in in the the second half of that game, only 51 points. And the same sort of dynamic uh, with with regards to Prairie View held them to only 32% uh, field goal percentage in the second half of that game. And they walked away uh, winning uh, handily in that game, but holding Texas Southern Prairie View to 51 to 58 points respectively. That's a big weekend. It tells me a little bit about their defense. They threw a lot of bodies out at Texas Southern and Prairie View. I believe they played 13 players in both of those games. Good stuff. Good stuff. Before we go into this next break, I wanted to bring this up and get uh, both of your thoughts, and I'll stick with you, Charles, and get your thoughts on this first. Uh, While in the women's side, we saw some of those lopsided scores, particularly for Norfolk State, Pine Bluff got one in there. Outside of that central beating up on Howard, 73-54 to in that opening game on Saturday, listen to some of these scores out of the MEAC. Norfolk State beat South Carolina State just by seven, 79-72. Mm-hmm. Uh, Delaware State gets by Cotton State, 55-53. to And then Maryland Eastern Shore just edges out Morgan State, 75-74. to <laughs> Then on Monday – uh, when you look for what takes place, Howard over South Carolina State was 82-78. Uh, you had a 12-point victory by Delaware State over Morgan State. 
Uh, but Central just gets by Norfolk State 60 to 58. And then Cotton State was a three point winner in overtime over Cotton State, uh, over Maryland Eastern Shore. That was Cotton State defeating them 58 to 55. I'm not finished. Let's go on to uh, the SWAC. Jackson State, as you know, was an eight point win over Alcorn State. And that game was to be had late into it, and they pulled away a little bit, but still it was just an eight point game there. Uh, you have Mathun Cookman, as we said. Uh, 98, where they uh, did everything they could not to score 100 uh, uh, in that matchup, and that was 98 to 86. But you had Grambling just gets by Prairie View, 69 to 63, seven point victory with Southern over Texas Southern, 58 to 51. But Alabama AM and Arkansas Pine Bluff, 63 to 62. You had Alabama State over Valley by three points, 54 to 51. So you're having some uh, entertaining, close matchups in terms of what's taking place. So that's fascinating to me when you talk about conference play and how this season may be uh, pretty testy. Uh, you had Southern pretty solid over Prairie View, 79 and 58. But you get back into these contests, Texas Southern just gets by Grandma. It was on the road, 54 to 52. And you have an eight-point victory by Alabama and m over Valley, uh, 78 to 70. 11-point uh, win by Alabama State over Arkansas Pine Bluff, 83 to 72. So you see some of these close scores, a lot more in the MEAC, fascinating over this series. So these are some things that I've watched over the years, so I'm kind of fascinated to see not only who's getting wins and victories, but what is the performance in terms of the matchups, particularly when they're on the road, what does that look like? And it gives you some early indication of who's playing really well and who's able to uh, tough out some of those tough victories, whether mm. at home or on the road. I'm always curious about the toughness mentality of a team that's being able to get a very tough victory, particularly when it's on the road. So I did want to kind of bring that to y'all's attention. Any quick thoughts that you want to share on that, Charles? Yeah, uh, a couple of things, uh, like you mentioned, is that is are the close scores, are they a precursor uh, to what this, uh, this basketball season is going to look like uh, in regards to some of these HBCU teams? But, you know, another little thing that I take a look at is, is the floor generals. Uh, especially, you know, how they're playing during the course of the season and those guys going into the tournament. Uh, Chase Adams from Jackson State uh, almost had a triple-double this past uh, weekend against Alcorn, 14-8-8. But we've seen how guys like P.J. Henry uh, can elevate a team, especially once you get in tournament tournament play. So I'm keeping an eye on those uh, field generals, if you will, or those playmakers uh, that really can uh, set up a team, uh, whether they get in foul trouble or whether they're out there on the court, they really help the team go. Man, uh, shout out to Deshaun Dyson, Swack, men's basketball player of the week, 30 points uh, per game, five assists per game, getting it done to your point, Charles, as you get it in there. Eddie Drew, any points that you wanted to uh, discuss in regards to uh, the closeness of some of those games and how competitive they are uh, to eke out some of those victories and what does it tell you as you start looking uh, at the rest of the season as it's very early? It tells me there's a lot of familiarity amongst, the, amongst these teams. Uh, if, unlike football, there were very few coaching changes along the basketball circuits uh, this year. So uh, you, we had the continuity uh, with, with philosophy. Obviously, players turn over between these mm. programs, but the coaches coaches, and the coaching philosophies are primarily the same. So these coaches have films. They know, they, they know these tendencies. And uh, uh, by the way, Charles, I did pull up that uh, Delaware State roster. Uh, some of the places that I see, Detroit, Michigan, Wilmington, Delaware, Baltimore, Maryland, San Diego, California, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, Charlotte. Uh, I, I thought I saw a D.C. in here. I think I saw a D.C. when I scrolled down here earlier. A couple from Pennsylvania, but none actually from Philly, but some of those Pennsylvanias may be some suburbs, so you never know. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> and there was a jersey in there, too. There was a jersey right. in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's close enough to New York as they play pretty big time basketball over there in that area. I know the New Yorkers uh, kind of get on me for that, but just saying, just saying. With that, we'll take our last break. We'll come back on the other side and give you some thoughts before we get out of here and give you your HBCU news of the week and prepare for Thursday to give you some mid major updates uh, in love with those top five teams. Stick with us. Be right back after this last break. Back. 
It's time for the 2024 Urban NerdCon. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Fairly Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. Itchy. Squirmy. Scratchy. Family not getting clean? Get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get them. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire, 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407-494-1471. thamptonlaw.com Nope. 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 You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus. Personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When it comes to press the analytic data with your hip hop, if you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mill with A.D. Drew and Charles Bishop, getting into our last segment. Uh, let's get into some of these major uh, games of the week, particular on the uh, SWAC and MEAC side. You can slide in if you have a big matchup you want to look at for some of our independents, men's or women's for that matter. But we got some bonus basketball, if you would, uh, over this holiday weekend. We got some games that will be scheduled for Thursday. We got Saturday. And we got some Monday uh, Martin Luther King Day uh, games, if you would. So fascinating to see what that looks like on the schedule uh, getting into it. So, Charles. What are some games, whether it's MEAC, SWAC, whatever direction you want to go, what's some games that you want people to keep their eyes on and why? Uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff women, uh, they take on Prairie View on a Monday night. You know how I am about Monday nights uh, in the SWAC when all fun stuff starts to happen. But uh, Zay Green and that tough UAPB basketball team uh, going down to the Baby Dome. We know how tough the Baby Dome uh, can be to play in. Students should start coming back in this weekend. So uh, we'll see what uh, home court advantage looks like. <clears throat> Good stuff. Uh, early matchup for me is a Thursday game. We get a little bonus point, particularly on the men's side. You get two undefeated teams, Jackson State 
that is looking to be in the mix, but you're taking on an upstart, if you would, Alabama State. They got two conference wins, so they come in at 2-0. and oh. So that's one that uh, kind of uh, is intriguing to me in terms of what it looks like on the road. And usually you always get some good entertaining games between Jackson State and Alabama State, particularly when they're in Montgomery. So we'll see what that looks like just to kind of tease that out. Uh, mm -hmm. as well as Jackson then has to go to Alabama A&M on Saturday. And that's that new arena. It's always yes. fascinating. Alabama A&M uh, Bulldogs will be fascinating to see what they can get down there in terms of Coach Petaway Bulldogs, as I like to call them, uh, down in those parts. A.D. Drew, I'm going to come to you to get some of your thoughts. I know you want to give the mid-majors a little love uh, as you're on here. So what programs that you have to look at? I know we need to make sure we keep our eyes on Benedict. As they continue mm. their undefeated run, top 10 matchups. So I don't know if you're going to go in those directions, and hopefully I'm not still in the thunder, but I certainly wanted to show out a little bit and let you know that I do a little homework as well because I know you uh, really get it done. And also show some love over there at the NIA. Lights, they're rolling. Number two in the country in terms of what they're getting done. Boy, I tell you, some good basketball, particularly on the men's side, mid-major division. But I know Drew will say keep your eyes on these as well. What other games you got on your calendar that we need to make sure that we are at least keeping one eye in that direction? Well, you, you, I'll start with Benedict since you were one to start right there. They've got a matchup against Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta, okay. one of the uh, yeah. uh, one of the better be teams goal. in the uh, SIAC this particular year. That game will be on Saturday, and you know, uh, Borehouse is normally that travel partner that you would go to, you go to Clark and then go uh, right down the street to Morehouse. But, you know, Morehouse on Monday is playing Howard in D.C. So mm -hmm. that Benedict Morehouse game, who's another top team in the uh, in the SIAC, will be at a later date and in time in the SIAC. But that's probably the highlight of the games that you're going to have in the SIAC. Although Talladega – uh, has two interesting opponents that they're playing in the SIAC this week. They're playing Miles today. Miles won top teams in the SIAC West, but they also play Lemoyne Owen. Lemoyne is a little bit down this year, so very interesting. And if you haven't paid attention to Talladega on the NAIA level, well, you need to start uh, paying attention to, uh, to Talladega. <clears throat> Just want to uh, put that out there. Let's switch quickly over to the uh, to the CIAA. Saturday, Winston Salem, Johnson C. Smith. I was going there too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Winston Salem and Johnson C. Uh, C. Smith. I think that's going to be a very interesting uh, uh, matchup right there. Uh, quickly going well, over. Winston Salem State comes in at eleven three five and zero. As you talk about that, so Johnson Smith eight and four three and two. So great matchup when you talk about keep your eyes on that one. Uh, Winston-Salem State is trying to get that back-to-back. -back. They sure are playing some good basketball um, in the CIAA, so good comments there. What else? Where else are you going, A.D. Drew, in the CIAA? Uh, that, that's what, that was the only one I really wanted to highlight in the CIAA. GCAC plays their first of those three-game pods uh, that they tend to uh, play this particular weekend, so uh, – Kind of hard to find the GCAC schedule. You have to go to the NAIA website and navigate over to find the GCAC conference. Uh, a couple of uh, ones on Saturday for Landa Smith and Wiley. I, and obviously, you know, these games are men and women that I am uh, that, that I'm talking about. So uh, there's another interesting one, especially on the women's side, Dillard and Fisk on Friday will play each other. So I think that's going to be a uh be an interesting uh interesting matchup there in the uh in the NAIA. And just want to take one la one quick look and see if we got anything interesting in Red Rivers Athletic Conference. Uh, Xavier has uh LSU Alexandria. You know, Xavier is, I believe it Xavier's in the top 25 in mm -hmm. in AIA and then they uh, host Louisiana Christian on Saturday. So those are some of the games that you want to keep your eye out on if you are a fan of the lower level of basketball. 
Yeah, we need to get that Talladega Xavier matchup. I don't know if Xavier is quite ready for Langston, but I wouldn't be mad at that one. As well, we might have to wait the postseason play to get it. So I'll mm. keep my eyes on it to your point. With that being said, I know you wanted to leave some things in 2023. You wanted to bury them. Uh, <laughs> what was that as you kind of teased out the beginning of the show? I didn't want to forget it. So let's uh, let A.D. Drew talk about what he wants to put some sand on and keep under the dirt in 2024. You know, uh, Dr. Kavir, if you remember about, what, about maybe 10, 15 years ago, we had this big old ceremony where we buried the N-word because we wanted our youth to stop using the N-word so so freely. And to a point, it has it has worked over the years. Now, I want to bury the FCS Celebration Bowl debate. Hmm. Any by first of all, if you did not play at that level, it's kind of hard to come in. Kind of kind of hard to come in with that argument. If you have not worked at that level, if you've not been administration at at the level. And or your and and for those of y'all whose school have never been in the celebration bowl, of course you, you're gonna kind of skew towards the FCS playoffs. I happen to have attended one of the schools that has done both. Joshua Sims now has attended a school, is alumni of a school that has done both. And there's one other school out there, JB Walker is a love of a school that has done both. It's 3-0 for us <laughs> as far as Celebration Bowl versus <laughs> FCS playoffs. And I guarantee you, if you keep going through the polls, players, administrators, coaches, fans, they are going to lean towards the Celebration Bowl. And, you know, good. I, I, I'm, I'm just tired of the, the, the people who have never had any skin in the game telling us how we should feel. That <laughs> <That's> we <laughs> are going to some, you know, we're, we're selling for mediocrity. We're real. We're realists. We don't get the funding that a South Dakota state or a Montana no. gets. Those are the flagship institutions of their school, like the University of Alabama, uh, University of Texas, University of Georgia, who get all the funding in, in those particular states. They have no other competition. There is no uh, there is no FBS program in those states. How many FBS programs in Texas, Dr. Kabil? Don't oh, even answer because you probably you can't even count that high. Right. I'm in Georgia. How many FBS programs are there in Georgia? Alabama, Florida, Mississippi, Louisiana, where a bulk of our schools play, the Carolinas. That money has to be divided. And we know where we're going to get. We get the table scraps. Mm. Kind of all, we can't compete. Where when you have a, a North Dakota who has North Dakota, North Dakota State, 